So here we are having church from our homes and yet being connected because there's no distance in the spirit. Amen. We are connected and we do it by faith and we do it with technology. Praise God for technology. Otherwise, we couldn't even do this. We'd be on the phone all day. So who feels like they've been on the phone all day for a few for the last few weeks? It feels like that. It's been busy, but you know what? God is in control. We don't need to be afraid because he knows he has it. And, you know, I can't seem to get away from speaking about fear not. It was sort of like what I was speaking about last week just before Ash got up to minister that I just can't get away from it. And it's like we need to hear scripture that says fear not for the Lord says I am with you. Ash just mentioned it in his uh, message with regards to communion. He is with us. He promises never to leave us or forsake us. But storms do come. Storms do come. I love that passage in Isaiah 43.1. Don't fear, for I have redeemed you. I've called you by name. You are mine. We've got to know in our hearts that we are his. We are his prized possession and he's looking after us. In Isaiah 41.10, fear not, I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. There's no other hand that I want to be in than the hand of the Father. I don't want to be in the hand of the politicians, even though we pray for them, we ask for wisdom. But ultimately, we are in his hands and we are secure in spite of circumstances. I know some of you are, have even lost your jobs. Praise God we're here in Australia where we can apply for benefits. But, you know, but it's, it's, it's a scary time. But uh, we are in his hands yeah. in spite of and, you know, I said last week that God actually commands us not to fear or to worry. You know, the phrase fear not is mentioned at least 80 times. And I said this last week that the heroes of our faith, all the heroes we love in the word of God, they actually were all told not to fear because they were in places of fear. So it's nothing that isn't common to man. This isn't the first time. It won't be the last time. But you know what? We're proving. We're being proved in our trust. We're learning to trust and we're learning to trust in him. Jesus said in John 14, 27, Do not let your hearts be troubled or do not be afraid. For my peace I leave with you and my peace I give to you. And you know what? If Jesus, and I said last week, I'm just, you know, just talking a little bit of what I said last week, and then I'll share a little bit more, and it won't be long. We're not doing a whole 45 minutes, just really to encourage you. When, when you know, Jesus said to his disciples, I said, Lord, what are the, what's the end of the age? And he actually says, nations will rise against nations in verse 11 of 21, kingdoms against kingdoms, and there will be great earthquakes in various places and famines and pestilences. We are in a pestilence. And even before then, in verse 9, he says, there'll be wars and commotions. This is a worldwide commotion. Yeah. The strongest establishments out there are being shaken. They're being shaken. And then Jesus said, do not be terrified in my version. It says, do not be terrified. And in another version, it actually says, don't give in to fear. Don't give in to the spirit of fear. The enemy would love to just that, that spirit of intimidation, fear and anxiety, which diminishes our trust and faith in him, wants to really hammer at us, the church. And I know as I'm talking to people, even though they're going through this, they're saying, but Jeanette, I'm feeling so confident in my spirit. And I'm just so thrilled because I'm feeling the same. It's not pleasant. It's uncomfortable. We don't know what's ahead, but we know who's got what's ahead. He holds it in his hands. And it actually says, don't give in to fear. Don't panic or give in to fear, another version says. For these things, Jesus said it, they must come to pass. 
but the end will not come immediately and so on. You can do a study on that yourself regarding the end times. But regards to shaking, there's a passage in Haggai 2.7 and God is speaking here and saying, I will shake all the nations. We're seeing that passage fulfilled again in our time. All the nations. And we this time can actually see it because of technology, because we're all on our phones looking at what the updates, the literal nations are shaking. And they shall come to the desire of all nations. And I know that that whole word of the desire of all nations, some see it as the messianic Jesus. Even though Haggai was prophesying it right back so long ago. And I even have a feeling that he was actually, they were in actually captivity in that time in Babylon. But... Um, the desire of all the nations is Jesus and our prayer and our intercession, I believe, right across the globe with the body of Christ is believing that there'll be just an outpouring of the spirit even through and because of these times. Because people's trust, ultimate trust in finances, in establishments is shaky. It's shaky. You're talking about shaking. Have a good read of Haggai 2.7. And you can also see it again in Hebrews 12.27. And it says, I will shake all nations and they shall come to the, the, come to the desire of all nations with Jesus. Yeah. So we're declaring, we're yeah. standing with, and I, God says, will fill this temple the church or his purposes with glory, says the Lord of hosts. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that awesome? And I, I, I'm just so thrilled with it. And then another passage that was given to me by a dear friend as she was sharing something to people as well. And I just got, I thought, I've got to read this one. Let's have a look at Isaiah 42, 16. Do you know I love Isaiah? I absolutely love Isaiah. Because he was a guy that was about between 740, 700 BC before Christ. And they were, you know, and the, there was um, a lot of things were happening there. But Isaiah speaks so clearly and presents the good news so amazingly. And I love going to Isaiah. And here he says in verse 42, 16. Okay, let me grab it here. I, just Isaiah. I think a lot of us have been from Isaiah 40. We've been in there. I've been in 41. I've been in 42. I just Isaiah in this season is really speaking to me. If you love to get in the word, you know, even read from Isaiah um, 41, 42, and here we are in 42, 16. This doesn't this sound like us? In verse 16, I will bring the blind by a way they do not know. Who feels a little bit blind at the moment in the natural? Because being seeing in the natural, we just can't see at the moment. I'm just talking in the, nat in the spirit we're seeing and we're hearing. But in the natural, isn't this interesting? I will bring the blind by a way they did not know. I will lead them in paths they have not known. That's us. We've not been here before. I will make darkness light before them and crooked places straight. These things I will do for them and not forsake them. So God is with us. Even if we've never been here before. I will bring the blind. We feel a little bit, Lord, we've not been, even as a church to do this, we've not been this way before. But he says, I will lead them. Then he says, well, I will make I will make darkness light. What seems darkness, he's going to make light. It's going to make sense. And he says, I will do for them. He's going to do things for us. So fear not, be not afraid. He's got us. And I'm, I just want you to turn back to Isaiah 41. This is another one I've been meditating on. I hope this is, encourages you. This has really been speaking to me in this last few weeks. It, from verse 10, 41, verse 10. And it says here, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. 
I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Behold, all those who were incensed against you shall be ashamed and disgraced. They shall be as nothing. And those who strive with you shall perish. You shall seek them and not find them. Those who contend with you, all this fear and anxiety and all the stuff, well, they, they're contending. The enemy's contending. He's contending for our faith. We're saying, no, we're not. As, as God said in that verse 10, fear not. This stuff's contending. It's fighting for our, it's fighting against us. And we're saying, no, it's coming against us to rob us. We're saying, no, we're not going to fear. It, it, it's incensed, the enemy's incensed against us that we shall not be ashamed or disgraced as the church, as the body of Christ. And those who strive will perish. And those who seek will not find them, will seek and will not find them. Those who contend with you, those who war against you, shall be as nothing, as a non-existent thing. For I, the Lord your God, will uphold your right hand, saying to you, fear not, I will help you. And I love 14 where it says, fear not, you worm Jacob. And sometimes when we're a little bit frightened because Jacob speaks of the church. It speaks of the body of Christ. Sometimes we feel a little bit like, oh, Lord, what's going on? And he's so beautiful because he actually describes God saying, fear not, you worm. You're feeling a little bit weak and, uh, you know, pretty cast down. <laughs> you know, a, a symbol of weakness, isn't it? But you men of Israel, I will help you. You men of without walls, you women of without walls, you men and women of the body of Christ in Perth, you men and women of the body of Christ in our nation and in the nations of the world. He says, fear not, I will help you, says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Behold, I love this, I will make you into a new threshing sledge with sharp teeth. You shall thresh the mountains and beat them small and make the hills like chaff. You will winnow them and the wind shall carry them away and so forth and so forth. You shall rejoice in the Lord and, the glo and glory in the Holy One of Israel. I believe we're going to come out stronger. We're going to become uh, out of all this more determined and I believe this, we're going to come out of this even with a boldness to evangelize even more because people are hungry. I'm hearing different ones talking, opportunities to share in supermarkets. One, um, Amanda had opportunity to share in her hair salon. We're going to have opportunity. I had an opportunity getting a coffee the other day just to share with this random person. People are open and they're listening. And I think we are going to be where it says, I will make you into a new threshing sledge with sharp upper teeth. I think the body of Christ is going to arise in strength and authority and a determination in this season because it, it, we're, we're, you know, we're not, we're actually rising up. I'm hearing that. We're not, we're not intimidated and we're coming against that spirit of fear. So speak hope, speak love because God's saying it to us, fear not for I am with you. So no, precious people, God is with you. He's with me. He's with us all. Stay connected. Phone each other, as Ash has said. But can you join me in prayer right now as we pray for one another? If someone's near you, just reach out to them where appropriately. And Father, we agree right now, Father. Before we just go our own way, Father, we just bring without walls the fellowship before you, Father. Father, every family, Father, every person, every senior, every child, every teenager, every single person, Father God. We cover our missions, Lord God, to raise, Lord. Robbie, Father, we cover all these ones, Lord. We cover the men's houses, Naomi house, Father. We cover, Lord God, all these ones, Lord. And we say, Lord, that you are a wall of fire around about us and the glory in our midst, Jesus. Father, we again thank you for the precious blood that the, our homes, Lord, are covered with the blood of Jesus. Father, we are covered and protected our vehicles, our children. 
Father, we thank you, Father, that we are in the palm of your hand and nothing, no weapon formed against us shall prosper, Jesus. And Father, we even extend our prayer, Lord, even to our neighbours beyond us even right now. Father, even in our suburbs, and we ask, Lord God, we ask for revival that you would even by your Spirit move upon the hearts, Lord God, of those, Father, surrounding us in our homes today, Lord God, that there would be a softening, there'd be opportunity to share the gospel, Jesus. Holy Spirit, move by your Spirit, Lord. Move, Holy Spirit. Move, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord God, that, Lord, you're setting us up for revival, God. And, Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Jesus, for your saving grace. We thank you for your word, Lord. We thank you for your promises, God. We thank you and we bless your holy name, God. Even now, Holy Spirit, just come and let your presence just saturate every one of us, Lord. Let your comfort, let your peace, let your manifest presence, Lord, just touch us, Lord. From the top of our heads to the soles of our feet, Lord. Right now, Lord. Holy Spirit, we love you. Holy Spirit, we thank you that there's no distance in the Spirit right now. And Father, those that have extra need today, God, we ask that you would just minister to them. Holy Spirit, bring comfort, bring healing. Bring answers where people are waiting for answers right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. name. Father, we pray for our children, your peace on the young ones, Lord. They may not understand, but Father, we ask that you'd clothe them with your peace, God. You'd clothe them with your joy, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for your presence. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Be blessed and continue to be a blessing. And we'll be back on either Zoom or email or Instagram. I won't be on Facebook, but others will be. Stay connected and know the Lord's saying he is with us. He exactly knows what we're doing. He's tucking us in the chambers, in our chambers, our homes, to to press into him and to be a blessing to our families and the ones he's connecting us with. Bless you all and we'll catch you soon. Bye for now.